Hello again, everyone, and welcome back to Learn Linux TV. In today's video, what I'm going to do is go over five tips for choosing your Linux distribution. And this is a great video for those of you that are just starting out because choosing a distro can be a very difficult choice, especially considering the ginormous number of distributions that actually exist. If you take a look at distrowatch.com, for example, you'll see no fewer than 100 choices. So which one do you choose? Well, in this video, what I'm going to do is help you narrow that down. Now, before we get started, there's two things that I want to mention real quick. The first is that I've released a brand new PDF that'll give you 10 tips for switching to Linux in general. So that way you can get even more information for those of you that need a helping hand when it comes to starting out. By donating just $15 to Learn Linux TV and supporting my channel, you'll get this PDF, which will have all kinds of tips. In fact, it's over 40 pages long, so you should definitely check it out. In addition to that, I wanted to thank the sponsor for today's video, System76. For the very first time ever, System76 is sponsoring a video on this channel, and I'm super excited to have them on board. If you haven't heard of System76 before, they're a company that makes computers that are born to run Linux. So this way you don't have to finagle your computer just to try to get it to run Linux. It'll run Linux already out of the box, which is a lot easier than trying to force Linux to run on something that it wasn't intended to run on. Located in Denver, they make some awesome computers, both laptops and desktops. So you could buy a laptop that was born to run Linux or a desktop that was born to run Linux. I've reviewed the Pangolin laptop recently, and I absolutely love it. You could check out that review if you haven't already done so. But even if you're not in the market for a laptop, they make awesome desktops. The Thelio line of desktops is something that you have to see to believe. They look awesome, but they also perform very well in addition to that. In fact, I've edited countless videos on my Thelio, and I've had a great experience, so I highly recommend both their laptops and desktops. So, support the channel and check out System76, I would really appreciate it. Anyway, with all of that out of the way, it's time to dive into my five tips for choosing your Linux distribution, so let's get into it. First, here's a tip that most people that are new to Linux don't know about, and that is to consider the age of your hardware. Believe it or not, this can single-handedly make or break your entire experience. Consider this scenario. You go to Best Buy and purchase a brand new computer. Let's assume that it has the latest hardware in every category. Let's also assume that it's a Windows PC that you plan to convert to Linux. The thing is, having the latest hardware might work against you. Think of it this way. If your computer was released in 2025 and you install a Linux distro that was released back in 2023, then that distribution can't possibly know about hardware that was released in the future. For this reason, if you plan on installing Linux on a brand new computer, make sure that you use a distro that's seen a major release recently. One primary culprit here is Debian. Now, Debian is one of my favorite distributions, so I'll try not to criticize it too much. But the fact is, Debian only sees a new major release every several years or so, and in fact, as I record this in 2025, the latest release of Debian Stable was released back in 2023. So if your computer was produced after 2023, you might have hardware incompatibilities to deal with. On the other hand, Ubuntu sees a new major release every six months, so it has a much better chance of working with newer hardware. Other distributions, such as Linux Mint, release major versions infrequently as well. However, to Mint's credit, the distro does have a feature that will enable you to download an updated kernel, so you can work around that problem without too much trouble. On the other hand, another factor to consider is older hardware. If you install a distribution that releases frequently, then it might be a bit resource intensive on older hardware. For that reason, if you are using hardware of a certain age, Debian would work out much better for you because it doesn't update often, meaning you could use your hardware for a longer period of time. For antiquated hardware, consider the XFCE version of Debian. Another great choice is the Mate desktop, which should also work very well on older hardware. My next tip is to choose a desktop environment for yourself before you start distro hopping. This way you can focus your distro search on those that feature your preferred desktop environment. This narrows down the list quite a bit and it can be very helpful. Thankfully, you could use Live Media to try out Linux desktops and that's exactly what you should do. Live Media gives you the ability to run an entire distribution from a flash drive without installing anything. 
The downside here is that in live mode, a Linux distro might not run as well as it would if it was actually installed on your hardware, but even with a performance penalty, it's a great way to test out distributions and desktop environments. If you need help choosing which distributions to test out in live mode, here's some suggestions. First, Fedora. Fedora features the GNOME desktop environment, which is for those of you that don't need a ton of customization options and you just want something that works. In GNOME, applications take up the majority of your screen real estate with most OS controls hidden in the Activities menu and also in the System Control menu. Other than that, GNOME stays out of your way while you work. The downside of GNOME, though, is that it's a modern desktop environment, so it's not really a good desktop to pick for antiquated hardware. The reason I mentioned Fedora as a means of checking out GNOME is because out of all the distributions that I've tried, it does the absolute best job of implementing it. In fact, Fedora gives you a first-class GNOME implementation, so that means if you don't like Fedora, then you probably don't like GNOME. Another GNOME implementation that's worth checking out is Ubuntu. Ubuntu is a super popular distribution, and like Fedora, it also features GNOME. The difference, though, is that Ubuntu's integration is extremely customized, to the point where some people might think of it as an entirely new desktop. What Ubuntu gives you is GNOME with additional quality of life features, such as a dock that's always visible. Another distribution that I recommend you try out is KDE Neon. Now, this distro isn't something that I'd recommend as your daily driver because its primary purpose is to give you an opportunity to check out the Plasma desktop, which is featured in many Linux distros. Plasma itself is a desktop environment that stands out from all the others with a very specific design language. In addition, it's very Windows-like in appearance, with its application launcher being close to the Windows Start menu. Perhaps the biggest selling point of Plasma is that if you like to tweak settings, then it has quite possibly the most customization options out of any other desktop environment out there. So, if you like to micromanage your computer, then you'll absolutely adore Plasma. If you do use Neon as a means of checking out Plasma and then decide that's the direction that you want to go, then at that point you can consider a distribution that features Plasma, such as Kubuntu. Kubuntu is a great choice, but OpenSUSE also provides a pretty good Plasma experience as well. Continuing, Zubuntu. Zubuntu features the XFCE desktop environment, which is another one that I recommend that you consider. XFCE is a very lightweight environment, so it's great for those of you that don't need a lot of bouncy icons while you get your work done. It's not the most beautiful looking environment that you can use, but that's only because XFCE focuses more on productivity and not so much on fluff. Zubuntu itself is a distribution that's based on Ubuntu that features XFCE, and it does a very good job of integrating it. Zubuntu does take some liberties with XFCE, giving you a customized experience. However, I still recommend Zubuntu because they don't go overboard with their tweaks, and their implementation ends up looking pretty good in my opinion. Another contender here is MX Linux, which also features the XFCE desktop. However, unlike Zubuntu, MX Linux tweaks their XFCE integration quite a bit, to the point where it might not be immediately obvious which desktop you're using. However, this distribution is really good, and it has quite a bit of polish and attention to detail, and it's also full of features. Keep in mind that MX Linux is based on Debian, so in some cases it might not be a great fit for brand new hardware. Of course, there's more desktop environments to consider, but the ones that I just mentioned are the most popular. If you'd like to watch a dedicated video that's all about desktop environments, then I'll leave a card right here for a video that's dedicated on the subject. Also, consider checking out the PDF that I mentioned at the beginning of the video for even more detail. My next tip for choosing a distribution is to consider its community first. Regardless of which Linux distro you might be considering, there's going to be a community behind that distribution. It'll either be a community of volunteers, or maybe even a group of people that actually work for a company. Depending on the size of the distribution, you might find that its community is either quite large or even, well, quite small. The reason why this matters is because when you're just starting out, you're naturally going to have a lot of questions. A natural thing to do is to access a distribution's forums or even their Discord channel and ask people about something you're curious about. If you're considering a fairly popular distribution, then there's a good chance that there's quite a few people to talk to about it. But if you're using a distribution with a smaller user base, then you might have to wait a little bit longer to get your question answered. Another thing to consider is the culture of the community. For example, while looking through the forums of a prospective distribution, try and get a feel for how patient everyone is when it comes to answering questions. 
If you see mostly messages where people are telling everyone to read the manual just about every time, then you should probably avoid that community. On the other hand, if you find that the community members are generally helpful, then that's a good sign. One distro to consider that has a great community is Alma Linux OS. The team behind that distro are extremely welcoming and are present at just about every Linux-related trade show. These people are passionate about their distribution, and it shows. But even if your chosen distribution doesn't have much of a community, consider mine. On the main website for this channel, you can access the community forums and ask your questions there. Just be sure to provide any relevant information for whatever it is you need help with, and then a community member will help you out. The next tip I have for you guys when it comes to choosing a Linux distro is to consider the applications that you plan on using. Obviously, it goes without saying that applications that are written for Windows or maybe Mac OS won't run on Linux without some specialist tweaking. But that's okay, because Linux has a ton of apps available, and most of the ones that you might use at work are available. For example, Microsoft Edge and Slack, applications that are very popular in the workplace, are available on Linux. However, the problem is that when it comes to software availability, this differs even further between distributions. For example, Microsoft Edge is available for Linux distributions that utilize the RPM and DEB package formats, which include very popular distributions such as Fedora and Ubuntu, but it might be difficult for you to install it on something else. For that reason, if there's a piece of software that's mandatory for you, then that alone might narrow down your list of distros quite a bit. And to make matters worse, there's a bit of a shift happening when it comes to software delivery for Linux distributions. Up until now, each distribution has used their own specific format for applications, which has resulted in developers just publishing apps for select distributions. Nowadays, the concept of universal packages has appeared, which is a means of only needing one application format regardless of which distribution you end up using. Since we're in a state of transition, not all popular applications have switched to this new style. However, universal apps gain more adoption each year. If you want to learn more about universal packages, I'll leave a card for a video right about here that'll explain the concept in more detail. But for now, I wouldn't worry so much about that, and instead, just write down the applications that you want to run, and then check the websites for each app to see which distros they support. Eventually, this won't matter anymore, but for now, it is what it is, and it might help you narrow down the list. And finally, we need to talk about security. Now, this is something that I talk about constantly on the Enterprise Linux Security Podcast here on this channel. The thing is, both residential and business users are constantly dealing with security threats. People are dealing with ransomware, stolen identities, data theft, you name it. For that reason, we have to stay especially vigilant. But what does that have to do with choosing a Linux distro? Well, the thing is, Linux is a more secure platform than others, but that doesn't mean that something still couldn't happen. If a new security threat emerges, it's crucial that our chosen distribution releases a patch to their users as soon as possible. If a distro takes too long to release an update, then its users are vulnerable for a longer period of time in general. We need to be sure that our chosen distribution is able to stay on top of things. One good way to get a good idea how your distro is when it comes to responding to threats is to pick a random high-risk vulnerability that's been on the news recently. These vulnerabilities will have a CVE number attached, and what you could do is see how much time has passed between the vulnerability being disclosed and your distribution releasing a patch for it. In fact, check a few of these. This will give you a good idea of how responsive your prospective distribution is when it comes to security threats. The popular distributions all seem to do a very good job of responding to these threats in my experience. However, I still urge you to check this out for yourself and come to your own conclusion. And there's our video. In this video, I gave you five tips for choosing your Linux distribution, and I hope you found it helpful. By the way, which distribution did you end up on? Let me know in the comments down below. I'd be really curious to see what you guys are going along with. Also, thanks again to System76 for sponsoring this video. I really appreciate it. Anyway, I have some awesome videos coming, if I do say so myself. So be sure to subscribe to Learn Linux TV for the latest in Linux, and I'll see you in the next video.